Hello and welcome to my video. Um, some of you may know this, but I have a Patreon page uh, which helps with uh, expenses, buying paint, all that sort of stuff, and canvases, etc. Um, occasionally I give away a painting to one of my patrons. So this is one that I'm giving. It's going to go to uh, America. And it's been hanging around for a while. I, I sort of kept meaning to finish it, but I, uh, you know, you may also know I've not been well. And occasionally um, I just have to stop. And um, let's just get to the bottom of the painting there. That, that's good. Um, so anyway, this one's been sitting around. It's got a little bit of damage on it, so I'm going to patch it up a little bit. But I may make some changes. And I know that the uh, recipient of this painting, uh, Anna, I'll just give her first name, um, does like poppies. So um, there's a few poppies, and I think I will just add a few more. Very simple to do, um, and I'll be I'll go through that. Um, but there's, as I mentioned, there's some damage on it. There's a few. You see that white spot in the middle? That's a little bit of paint from another painting. Uh, got a bit carried away there. What have we got here? Let's. How far can I zoom in? Oh, that's it. There's a couple of marks in the sky there that look like um, UFOs, I suppose. Uh, do I need to do anything with the sky? I think there's a there's a mark or two. Yeah, there's one in the middle there. There's a line. That's going to have to go. Uh, and I might even do a little bit of work on the tree trunk just to sort of make it more tree trunky. And uh, let's see how it goes. Now, if it goes too quickly, I'll um, work on another painting as well. But uh, to start off, let's, um, I think, add some poppies. OK, so how do you make poppies? Well, I, I have a very simple technique. Um, Japanese red is the most poppy-like colour that I can find. Um, and in fact, before I add any more poppies, I'm just going to retouch that little bit there because there's some white paint that must have gone adrift. So what do I do? I put, I put a, a few blobs, don't try and paint poppies, a few blobs of red that have a sort of flow. How do you describe that? I don't know. Um, so let's just put these blobs here. And obviously, as they get closer to us, they're going to get slightly bigger. So there we go. This, I'm not, um, not going to spend too much time on it because you don't need to. Simple as that. It's not that I'm lazy or sick. <laughs> well, I can be lazy, but... Um, and I, I'm a bit sick, but anyway, so th there we are. There's some lumps of red. Put another one there. So when I've got when I've got the red on uh, at full strength, I then add pink. So it's a red a red blob and a pink blob, and at the end there will be a, a a dark blob in the middle, which is the centre of the poppy. So. And literally, just try and do it in one touch. See what see what it does. And what it does is it just makes a poppy-like shape with a little bit of light hitting one of the petals. There's some poppies. And they've got a nice sort of nice spread to them. Nothing too, um, too obvious. Let's have a little couple in the background there, just sort of disappearing. A few spots. Literally just spots. I think there's a video of me painting this from scratch. Um, if I can dig it up, I'll put the link below. But I'm so disorganised. I have all these videos. What I should have done, I should have numbered all my videos. Like, you know, from the beginning. Although, when I started, I had no idea that it would actually uh, take off the way it did. There we are, there's a, a few more spots there. So, I mean, if you're going to paint poppies, paint poppies. One or two isn't quite right, is it? You need a, you need a few. They always look good in a group. So, uh, there we are, there's some poppies. Right, so, and then, um, the next little trick, let's have a little bit of light there, is to put a bit of Payne's Grey. Literally, just a dot. 
if you've got some Payne's Grey on your palette. So, using a small brush, I think we'll have one there, literally just a dot. And of course you won't see the whole dot on some of the poppies, so maybe one or two may not have a dot. So there's some with dots. Now, uh, the stem of a poppy is usually a sort of white, watery, what I call a watery green. So I'm going to make that with light green and a bit of white added. And I'm not, I'm not going to um, paint the whole stem. Don't need to. Now, um, I'm, I'm cleaning my brush, but I'm cleaning it with oil. Not using any turpentine or any any kind of thinner. So literally just. In fact, if you put if you if you've got a little bit, I mean these come with a dark tip anyway. They've all got a dark tip, regardless of whether you've used them or not. Um, but if you put a bit of oil on a brush, particularly a small brush, and then just touch it on a dry piece of paper, the paper will pull any pigment out of the um, brush and then I just give it a quick one of those. Right, the stem. Light green. Light green being this colour. I won't need all that, I mean that's just a little. And then to that I'm going to add a little bit of white. Not a lot of oil but enough to make it really very mobile. There's mobile Mobile paint and very mobile paint, and neither of them drip, so it's quite a delicate balance. And the hint of a stem. So what makes pictures look um, amateurish is when someone does the whole stem, whole stem, whole stem, every single time. You don't need that. You only need a hint of it, and uh, just enough to say to people, there's a poppy, it's growing on... It's, white stem which is poking out of the weeds like so just a hint so there's a few poppies and that's all the, all the stems you're going to see now uh, I think we'll get on to a little bit of retouching I've got a few marks on there that need to be changed so let's have a look at the entire painting. But um, there's a close-up just to give you an idea of um, how much detail there isn't and how quickly you can give the illusion of detail. So let's go and... Um, right, let's go and have a look up at the tree here. I mean, you know, you're going to see little little snippets of stuff that I'm going to fix um, and some of it you'll think well why is he showing me that well the reason is it's because um, some people get, will, will I know for a fact will fly into a bit of a panic if they have something like that you know white spot on your painting and what do you do about it well when it's something like a tree trunk it doesn't matter what you do to be absolutely honest scratch it off And if it looks okay when you've just taken the edge off it, that's fine. I mean, there's a little bit of a, a white mark on the tree trunk, but it's, it stops being a, a spot. So let's, let's move down a touch here. There's another one there. There's one here. And actually, by the look of it and the feel of it, it's a bit of gesso. So I think I probably had the painting badly positioned in the room. And I was gessoing something, and a little bit of gesso flicked off across the painting. There's also some marks here uh, in the sky, so maybe I'll just sort them out. And it'll be the same sort of deal. I'm going to sort of take the edge off them. Um, and then if it leaves a mark, it doesn't matter, I'll just sort of go over it with a bit of white. Uh, so let's just... This is actually quite boring. Right, so we've got a spot there. That looks like gesso again. Now, it's getting bigger when I scrape it, so I'll stop scraping that. 
and then I'll, I'll fix it another way in a second. So in the sky we've got these dark dots here. Let's just take the edge off it because I think if I scrape it, it'll just be white underneath. Unless, of course, I'm wrong. Um, and it won't be. Yeah, they're mostly coming off. But I will get a little bit of white in there anyway. Because I'm going to reshape some of the, um, uh, the edge of the tree and some of the clouds. Right, so we'll skip, we'll skip the um, spot fixing. Let's go to the general overview. Okay, so before I um, do the edge of the tree, I'll do a bit of sky. Then I can put the, uh, I can combine the effect of the tree, the foliage, on the right-hand side of the tree uh, to blend in with the sky a little bit better than it is. And also I want to do a little bit of reshaping up here. I'm not totally happy with that shape there so we'll see what happens i don't quite know what will happen there yet well i'm uh, i'm actually figuring out what colors to mix i'll just um tell you about my patron page and how how it works um i do put stuff on there not often and mostly that's been because of my health however i should point out that um the reason it my patron page exists apart from helping me survive is that when you become a patron if you pay a certain amount each month supposing you paid uh, the equivalent of 30 euros a month don't know what that is in dollars i guess it changes all the time but um then you you get free access to two of my zoom classes so you get uh basically you pay for one lesson you get two a month and um and of course, there's always the chance that you may end up owning a painting. I can't give a painting to everybody because I don't think I've got enough life expectancy, but um, I can dish out quite a few. I don't know how many I've done so far, but it's probably about seven or eight, I think. And uh, I don't give paintings to people who pay more than other. You know, you don't have to pay a lot of money to be entitled to a painting um, I guess it's I guess I do it on a whim right so uh, I'll come back to that in a minute uh, let's see what we can do with the sky so I'm going to use um, royal blue and white and I'll tell you a little something I, I, I do like my stormy skies and if you're a follower you know that I do you know I, I've got the thing about stormy skies However, I was looking I was looking at my stuff the other day and there there wasn't anything that really had a nice fresh feel. They're all they're all I mean moody is one thing, but I, you know, I don't want to get known for being the guy who painted miserable pictures. Um so maybe I'll try and sort of add a bit more light to some of them. I'm not going to go mad, I'm still going to keep some interesting uh, skies, but um, you know, perhaps not quite so uh, quite so depressing. Uh, in fact, here's a little question for you: How are my paintings depressing, or are they moody? I I, I lean towards moody because um, nobody particularly wants anything too depressing on their walls. Uh, right, so, anyway, yeah, what do you think? Let me know. The more comments you can make, by the way, on on, uh, on YouTube, uh, the better it is for the algorithm. The algorithm will favour my uh, paintings if there's lots of comments. Okay, so, as, you, as I told you, I'm adding royal blue and white and you can see it's different from this blue the blue up here that's uh, probably ultramarine and white so i'm going to do a little bit of that so that they run into each other a bit and i'm going to put a little bit of a mist on the horizon is that even looking slightly misty. Maybe it's not looking misty enough. 
we shall see. Um, yeah, ask me, ask me questions. I mean, don't don't ask me if <laughs> don't ask me if this can be done in acrylics. The answer is, well, you can paint a picture that looks like this in acrylics, but you cannot do it with the technique that I'm using. It doesn't work. Believe me, I've tried a long time ago, um, but uh, yeah, it's a totally different technique. So don't ask that. And how do I clean my brushes? Well, if, that's, if the brush is incredibly battered and it's been around for a while, uh, I don't, sometimes I don't um, bother cleaning them because quite frankly, it'll take so much water. I don't use any kind of fill, um, thinners, don't use turpentine, don't use paint strippers, any, any of those things. You don't need it. Let's have a little bit of something there, shall we? Uh, I use uh, detergent. If I'm going to clean the brush at all, if not, I just sort of, they get recycled. Um, and uh, jo joking apart, somebody said, somebody put the idea in my head a few weeks ago. Why don't I sell my br sign my used brushes and sell them? Well, you know, I've got, I've got quite a few here. Looking at the floor underneath the uh, painting, there's a cardboard box which is overloaded with used brushes and um, another pile next to that. Uh, so I, I'm reluctant to throw them away until I know what I'm going to do with them. Anyway, it was suggested to me that I should sell my brushes, sign my brushes and sell them. Who would want to buy one of my used brushes? I don't know. Let me know. Is that a good idea? Should I, should I cash in on my junk? <laughs> oh dear things we come up with. Okay, so here, I'll tell you what, this is not a secret technique. See what I'm doing there, this is to get cat hair off it. Right, so let's just put a little bit of the same colour so that it relates across the picture. Let's put a few little bits here just to, you don't need to do a lot, just a little hint of it there, smudge it out. There we go carries the colour across. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more work on the tree trunk. This has patched up the sky. The marks on that are basically gone. Um, and I'm still, I'm st I'll tell you what is sort of ringing my bell at the moment, and that is to put some blue over the landscape, just there. Okay, so it's literally going on like a mist. Just to knock, knock the skyline back. I've got this thing about, you know, knocking skylines into the distance. Because that's how you, that's how you paint perspective. Okay, I'm sort of happy with that. I'm one of those sort of people who's never totally happy. I'm, I'm sort of happy, you know. Right. What else should we do? I'll tell you what, I'm going to be a little bit brazen with the tree. In a moment, I'm going to sort out the foliage here, but not till I've figured out what I'm going to do with the tree. And I think I'll get another brush. This has been, the one I've just been using is a small brush. It's um, three centimetres, which is just over an inch. And I think, I think I'll do a little bit of bark. A bit of bark work. Okay, let's do some bark work. Let's have some, uh, right, we'll have red ochre. <sighs> Excuse me. Blowing. Do you know, I'm going to have to have words with my cat. It doesn't matter where I go, there's cat hair. Right, so um, the tree, the tree at the moment, is looking as though there's quite a strong light hitting it here. I could play on that by pushing this into a bit of shadow up here. And of course I was just saying about how I want to get more light in my pictures. Um, so I've got a, a biggish brush. I'm making a nice sludgy 
tree trunky colour, which is sort of green and grey and sludgy. Some people say that they like the way I teach, and they, the reason is because it's not pretentious. I don't try and blind anyone with science. I don't think it's worth talking about colour temperature and tonal values, because um, if you understand them, and you, or you half understand them, it can actually steer you in the direction of making errors. So what I do, and what I've always done, is um, work on the idea that it'll be it'll become an exti extinctive. It's going to be extinctive, instinctive. I might have to edit that out too. So that I just sort of, I just do it, and after a while you know uh, what's right and what's wrong. Okay, so here's a bit of instinctive sculpting of a tree. How does that look? I personally think that's better. I think it gives them a much more round feel. Now, what you don't want to do is have light going just to dark. That's, that never works. What you want is variations across across the board, so to speak. So that you have light, dark, and then coming into light just before it goes round the corner. It uh, sort of enhances the, the roundness. It's the same with anything. If you're painting a picture of a bowling ball, you'd do the same thing. Yeah, let's have a little bit of, a little bit of something there. Let's increase Increase the drama without making it miserable. Now, I've got some white blobs here, and I think the idea with those was that they would be small white flowers, but I don't think it's working. So I'm going to just sort of tone them down into a bit of shadow. Yeah, that was a bit distracting, I think. Some light bits on that piece of wood there, that's okay. I think that's fine. Uh, using the same brush, uh, sorry, well, the same one I just did that on the tree. This is uh, seven centimetres, which is about two and a half, maybe three inches. And um, I'm going to use this to put in some slightly bolder foliage. I'll probably bring this out a bit more, that, that stump. Few bits of tree trunk work soon, but just before I get onto that, sap green red ochre. And I'm just going to show you how loosely you can do what I'm about to do. Okay, so there's the edge of the tree. Now these the obviously this foliage is attached to a branch that's the other side of the tree. Um, I can act I could put a branch across with some foliage up here, but I, I think that will darken it a little bit too much, so I'm going to keep it to this side. So there's the light side, here's the dark side. So up here, let's just give the impression of some bits of foliage, and the only way you're going to make this work is to do, um, well, no, no, so it sounds awfully, I'm, I'm really not a big head. Um, there are other ways to do this. This is my way of doing it, and that is to work quickly and sporadically darting about to give the appearance of foliage. So there we are. There's, there's, I just want it to be an impression, and it will become more of an impression when I start to add little white, uh, not necessarily white, but lighter highlights back into the uh, texture of the tree there. So here we are. There's some hints, hints of... Um, Hints of treosity. There we go, a little bit of darkness on that tree there. A little spot or two here. Darken that down a bit, cover that up at the top there. Okay, so there, there we go, that sort of starts to break it down, but I, I don't want it, I, I, it's got to be connected through. I, I don't want separate islands. Right, ah, right, so this is, 
this is a message for general landscape painters. When you paint landscapes, um, skyscapes and landscapes are totally different things. But when you put bushes and trees in a landscape, don't do one clump, two clumps, three clumps, four clumps. Connect things through. Have a flow so that everything connects. And I'll be showing you exactly what I mean. I haven't got much space on this painting, but I'll show you what I mean in that little area there uh, in a moment. So, um, yeah, back to this. I just, I'm just sort of putting in a little bit of shadow there because I know that the shadow will enhance the light over there. And then down this edge, same sort of deal. Sludgy colours. Light green leaves against a light sky will look dark unless there's direct light, hit, light hitting them. So let's just get this edge here looking a little bit more fragmented. And again, this is my, my way of doing it. You may not agree and you may, you may be the type that sits down um, with a brush, carefully crafting every leaf. Fine, do it. And um, uh, I, don't, I don't mean to sound flippant, it's not my way of doing it, because um, I, I, if I do that, I know that I can't get movement into my painting. So it's got to have this sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fidgety sort of feeling of movement and I don't know, it just puts, to me, it just puts a little bit of life into the, into the way the foliage falls, if you see what I mean. There we go. Okay. Right. Okie doke. Right, so... Sorry, my computer's pinging in the background. Um, so there we are, I've got a patch of poppies. Maybe, I, maybe I'll put more poppies in, I don't know. Make it more poppyful. But before I make my mind up on that, I'm just going to show you this. So what I've done, I've just touched the same brush that I did all that with. Just touched it with a bit of white. Um, what I'm going to do is some of these. Okay. Add a few highlights. Don't want them to be quite so bright, so let's just smudge them down. So there's a, the beginning of a bit of variation in the uh, in the tree trunk. I'm not going to go too much further than that. In fact, what I'm going to do is add just the odd spot or two using my rigger, which I've put somewhere, but who knows where. There we go. Right, so a rigger with a little bit of oil on it. Literally just a tiniest, tiniest drop. Stick a bit of, um, a little bit of red ochre in it and let's see what we can do. So there, we got a, a little bit of light catching that bit of wood there. Let's just bring that to life a touch. Let's have a little bit coming off there. We have to zoom in on that uh, because if I'm putting in a bit of pretend detail, 
then you need to see it, really. Um, otherwise it won't mean much. So there we are, there's a little bit of splintered wood, there's a few little bits poking up there. In fact, we, we, could, um, we could even add a few more twigs just above that. I'll move the camera in a second. But, but at the moment, below, let's just get a little bit of a little bit of something in there. Just just shapes. That's all. Just shapes to marks. I beg your pardon. Marks to describe shapes. And it's a tree. So whatever. You, and this is the tree of your mind. So whatever you do on this tree, it doesn't matter. Because the tree exists in your head, and who's to say it's not right? Let's just move the camera up a bit. Okay, so I'm going to just add a few little hints of twigs. So we've got this branch coming down here. Let's uh, just enhance the edge a little bit. It's almost nothing, what I'm doing, it's just literally um, lines, you know, little, little uh, twiggy shaped bits. I don't really want to get into um, detail like this, it's just in case you're interested really. A little bit of drawing just there. This is drawing without, you know, you can do this without going to art college <laughs> and studying drawing. It's just, it's not the same sort of thing. When you go to art college and study drawing, it's intensive every day. Well, it was for me anyway, years and years of scribbling. And um, it was useful for certain things in the, over my career. Okay, so that's good. Now, here then, I'm just going to put a few marks on the tree trunk just to sort of catch a bit of light. And then smudge it with your hand just to add depth to it. Okay, so that's all That's all I'll do for detail. Just, just that bit, because otherwise um, we're going into a whole different style of painting, but uh, it's just a little focal point. The only thing I might fiddle with before I finish, I'll, I'll do that over there first, is this branch here and just sort of tweak it a bit. Don't quite, maybe I'll just add uh, a couple of highlighted twigs, you know, where they're catching the light, something like that. So um, I want a smallish brush. Right, so what was I saying about these, the landscape? What you need to do is keep things connected across. Now, most of the landscape's actually done, so that what I'm going to do is going to be quite minimal. But we've got a lump of um, tree, tree-like material here. So let's just sort of bring that up there a bit and make it look more like a, a bush. Take it down across there. Um, really bold shapes at the moment. So we've got one clump, and then we want to connect it, you see, to over here, without a break. Trust me, it does work. It, uh, it gives a better feel to the painting. And here, you see I've got this mark there. Let's just sort of continue that over, like so. I'm going to put something here that's it's a little bit like a hedge, I suppose. It's a hedge going across. And looking at the um, general shapes, I want... An, what I don't like is like little humpy shapes. So I'm going to just flatten the top of that. And then I'm going to introduce a bit more light green. Okay, so a little bit, a little bit of palette knife here, and I want to make this interesting. So I'm going to pull that up. And 
take the light off the edge. Let's see what we can do. Let's have um, let's have a little bit of light catching there. Very bumpy paint underneath, so that's that's actually quite nice. It's adding some nice accidental textures to the picture. I don't really want that to shout, you see, over there. I want it to sort of recede back a bit. And I may, let's, in fact, let's try and get it back a bit further. Let's pull a little bit of, a little bit of green up into there. And a bit more. And now I look at it, I think, I think maybe um, it probably may not hurt to have a little break or a path at least. So let's have, let's have some strong light just there. And then just a little tiny break here or the hint of one. Does it matter? don't know. This is how my brain works, you see. I'm continually questioning everything that I do to see what re re <laughs> to see what replies come out of my mouth. And that's too bright. And that's too... Oh, well, that might, I might get away with that. This bit's too bright just there. It's spreading out slightly. There we go. How's that? Too much. See? Ask yourself questions. You don't have to record all your questions like I have to, but um, that's the way I work anyway. There we go. There's a... Still not quite what I want. It's close, but it's not quite there. Or is it? I think what I could do is I could... I could let this dry a bit and then put a glaze over everything above this point and send it way back. In fact, I think I will do that. So that'll be another video very soon. Yeah, I like that idea. So we'll let that, we'll let that harden off. That should dry quite, quite quickly. Um, Put some little textures in. In fact, let's mush it up a bit because that's all going to get it's going to get muted. Well, I quite like that. Okay, let's leave that there for now. Good. Right. So the last bit I'm going to do today on this one is this twig down in the foreground here. Well, it's not a twig really, it's a, it's a stump. It's a stump with a few twigs on it. Right, so we've already got all this. This is all dry here and um, I think it's quite a nice structure to, to work on. So it's going to be um, red ochre and white. Maybe just calm it down a little bit by adding a tiny touch of green. All I want to do is uh, work on, I'm working on the idea, right, so people will see the poppies, they'll see the twig, they'll go up there, and then I'll come look at the clouds, and then they'll come back round again. Hopefully they won't um, lose interest. And of course I just showed you something and I didn't move the camera, but I'll go over that again in a minute. So here's this little stumpy thing here. So let's just... Um, just put a little bit of shape around it so it's got a little sort of wrinkle there where it comes out of the main tree trunk and then the light catches it just here, catches it just there, a little twig going off that way. Good. And a bit more paint. It's literally, it's almost flesh coloured, this paint uh, that I'm using. 
So we've got a twig that goes straight up, so let's go up here and then come down and meet it. Splat, like so. There we go, good. And then uh, over here, goes off that way, so let's have that just str strengthened a little bit. Like so. It's just something to rest your eyes on. A little bit of twiggery. Right, in fact, while I've got this colour, make sure you can see where I'm going to work. Um, okay, I think you could probably look up a bit more. Up there. Okay, so we've got this twig that comes up here and it goes up there. And it gets very thin. So why don't we have um, something coming down here that connects to it, like so. Too bad. Okay, so anything else we want to do? We want to thicken the bottom very slightly down here. I say we, there's only me. <laughs> um, so down here, let's thicken that just a little bit so that it's more plausible, that it holds the weight, you know, everything that's above it. And then there's a few little marks just on the, on the wood, a few sort of just literary spots where the light is getting caught. All adds twinkle. Sorry about my shoulder. Let's just... Let's have a look at the mud. Well, there's not much to see there, really. It's just the bottom edge of the tree. Does it need anything doing to it? I think, um, right, so if I was back in college and I was trying to impress my tutor, I would probably do this. Put a little mark or two and a line or two coming up here if the, if the brush will actually work. There we go. Now I don't actually normally paint strands of grass because um, you don't need to. These are just, I don't know what you call them, it's just uh, incidental, incidental marks. There we go. Is that looking twiggy and twiggy and messy? Ah, not too bad. Okay, well I think with that I'm gonna stop there. And um No I'm not. I'm gonna show you something else. Alright, so uh yeah we got these twiddly bits here. Uh, not ha awfully happy with it, so let's just, I, I think it needs strengthening slightly. Just a little bit of, a little bit more structure, just there. And it's also very straight. It's the enemy, the enemy of a professional looking painting. Get a bit of wiggle in some things, you know, things need to wiggle. So let's connect that to this. Let's have a branch going off that way, and let's have a wiggly one coming down there. Uh, this is this is not what I normally do on paintings uh, because it, you know I don't want I really don't want to get into detail. I keep saying this, don't I? But I I think um, I've got to know my student over the years, and I think she'll like this. See, the twig is light against dark, dark against light. And let's just have another one. Or even if it's not complete, just a hint of something. There we go. Right, I think we're done. 
um, before I send it off uh, well it's obviously got to dry I've got to varnish it etc but uh, before I send it off I've got to finish that side of the painting got to do something with that and I will show you what I'm going to do on that uh, at the end of the video and it'll just be to mute uh, the landscape so there we are all, it, all I need to do really is sign it and whenever I sign pictures I don't sign them on the front it's very unusual if I do uh, normally I um, sign them on the back and they have my thumbprint and my signature sealed under varnish on the back so if you get a painting and someone says, oh, that's a Stuart Davis, and it doesn't have my thumbprint on the back and my signature under the varnish, then it's not by me. And apparently there are some people uh, in China who are um, copying me. So there we go. Hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I've definitely enjoyed it. It's a, if, funnily enough, I'll just say this briefly, even though I don't normally do detail, I quite enjoyed doing these little twiggy branchy bits and I think keeping it slightly less than you would expect is probably a good thing. And um, yeah, check the photograph at the end and you'll see what happens over there. Okay, so uh, thanks for being here. Hope you enjoyed this, hope you learned something and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.